so my computer's died, so I haven't got my notes. And also, the, so yeah, technological things today, but I'll just talk. Um, so uh, yeah, apologies, everyone. It's as you can see, it's it's if you know if we can sort of look at that, and then we can kind of see what else in there as well. Um, thanks, Tom, for the introduction, and um, I'm. Yeah, just a sort of little overview. Um, so I'm really delighted to be in the artist in residence on this this project. Um, it's really fascinating, and I mean I've just started really, <clears throat> um, uh, and looking forward to kind of spending the summer on it. Uh, but already it's kind of sort of helping me to make sense of a bit of a shift in my work. Just briefly. Um, it, my work recently has shifted from very much sort of about the, the built environment and kind of architectural utopias and dystopias um, and sort of things like the social politics of regeneration um, into a territory that's much more sort of mysterious and metaphorical and really sort of amazingly well timed with this, uh, this project, this residency, I think. Um, so I'm kind of... Hoping to sort of add to all this research, um, looking at some of the ideas in a, in a visual, in a visual way, and coming up with some sort of visual sort of uh, metaphors, strategies, devices to express some of the ideas that are that are coming up. So I'm going to show you um, not that many slides, only about 13 slides um, of recent and current work. A couple of works, there's quite a few works in progress going on but a couple of them are too embryonic to, to, to bring in really, but I've got a couple of new works that I've done since the residency kind of in person. So I can show you the sort of materiality of the surface, which, you know, in painting you can't get a set, well, you can see the difference between this and this, you know, you can't get a sense of the proper sort of materiality of, of, of painting from a digital image. So, um, and I've kind of, um, re-looked at some of these recent works in the light of the residency and grouped the slides into kind of thematics of a few slides each which hopefully kind of correspond to some of the ideas that are coming up. So the first few slides is really addressing ideas of simultaneity um, through kind of spatial layers and time as well. Um, and the second sort of group is uh, to do with the recurring image and how this might kind of be analogous to a recurring dream potentially and then the third group is to do with apparitions and um, using the idea of the apparition as a metaphor for illusion in painting and potentially to do with this research to do with illusion and hallucination and the real and the unreal um, so and running through these ideas is, the, is the, the idea of the recurring object as well, the sort of hybrid object, which I'm thinking about and I'll talk more about it as a sort of in-between unnameable thing. And hopefully this is kind of maybe starting to, I'm starting to think about this in relation to some of the things that we were discussing before, like these in-between states, like we mentioned previously, the hypnagogic state. Um, these are all sort of embryonic new, new thoughts. So. Um, Okay, so I'll just I'll just talk you through the work, like how it's made and how it embodies some of the ideas in there. Um, so the first slide on here is um, all that is solid. So um, it's um, uh, 120 by 120, so it's kind of arm span size. Um, mixed media on on board, so acrylic, spray paint, and emulsion. And what I'm thinking about with this. What I was thinking about with this uh, painting, they're all really recent, the 2021, um, uh, is the idea of moving from sort of rationality into irrationality um, in, in the same painting. So you have the um, kind of tower block underneath scaffolding that you know obeys laws, it sort of obeys the laws of gravity in a sense. Um, and but also using the scaffolding as a uh, as a sort of recurring motif certainly it's really important to, to, to me in my work scaffolding uh, because it's sort of it represents flux and also um, the unknown to a certain extent you know it hides what's it sort of like 
don't worry too much if you can't. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you, yeah. if you can, that'd be great. I'll just, sorry, I'll just, we won't, <laughs> we're looking at you now. Um, let's go on to um, um, <clears throat> So, you know, it conceals what the reality, in a sense, of whether, you know, for example, whether a building or monument's going up or, or coming down. So that's the sort of reason for it. And then as the painting kind of comes forward, I don't know which one's, um, towards the surface, in a sense, I've used, um, tried to make the ground, the idea of ground, unsolid and destabilised. So by using um, these handmade stencils that I make of grids, which are emblematic of architecture and control of space, really, as well as lots of other things. But, um, and then sprayed with spray paint various times so it becomes sort of diaphanous and layered and literally sort of unsolid. And the, the stencils are always handmade, which is quite important because it's kind of a, this is an aside, but it's kind of a laborious process that allows for thought. And also they're, they're a bit wonky because of that, so to use a technical term, so, um, uh, which creates more sort of confusion in there. And then coming forward again into this kind of cartoon uh, language, quite absurd language really, um, thinking about the, the most simple sort of silly way that you could, you could suggest a landscape with a, a tree kind of like that shape, almost like a, a lollipop, but, and graffiti as well. Uh, which is a recurring motif um, to which is kind of like a symbol of urbanism and also an idea of kind of chaos and chaos recurs in in the work um, so but it brings hopefully it brings the viewer from the illusion back to the surface of the painting um, which is really important I'll touch on it later to do with this research about the idea of the object and the illusion and kind of the reality of the object and the illusion of the surface and how that might relate to dreaming and, and waking. Um, so next one, hopefully you can see. So it's called Speculation and this is um, 160 by 2 metres. Um, but it's kind of, I think it's, it's 150 by 180, so it's, it's a size that I work on a lot. I've got two, a, a few new ones um, at that size happening. Um, but this really, the main uh, sort of point about this is um, about time. And having, uh, I'm really interested in, you know, in some of the research that, that you might have touched on yesterday, I missed it, but um, about um, the difference of experience of time in dreams and time in, in wakeful consciousness. Um, and so this one, I wanted it to sort of move from night to day in, within the same painting. So moving across in one image from, from, yeah, from night to a, a sort of day. Um, and it's something I think I'll be kind of further, there are further ex exploring actually, but that sense of like the possibility of, of all time being in this one, one surface. Um, so using the moon, I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, I've, I've, it, it's painted in a romantic way. So it kind of alludes, the moon alludes to, um, obviously it's a signifier of night time, so it's sort of telling you that. But it very much kind of alludes to romanticism in, in painting. And also I think, uh, uh, for me, something about sort of belief systems as well. There's a lot we put into the moon, a lot of kind of ideas and and. and sort of folkloric myths and things. Um, <clears throat> and then um, this pile of tyres um, is also like a recurring motif that keeps coming coming up, this recurring kind of edifice, something that's kind of human made and it's a you know, large structure but it's not exactly architecture so it's kind of vernacular. Um, and, in, and importantly really, the purpose of this to be read in, in two ways or, or multiple ways that it could be just like in the scrapyard or something or um, it could be a sort of protest or barricade um, edifice as well so things I'm really careful in the paintings um, and I'm kind of looking at this in the light of what you know we're talking about um, to have these objects or things that are sort of unclassifiable or slightly undefinable and moving between different uh, read 
buildings or sort of states. Um, <clears throat> all kind of tied together with this very warped grid, which um, is, um, again, this sort of, it, sort of instability. Um, and it's kind of oscillates. It's hard to see because I've got the, the painting here, but oscillates between three dimensionality, which it, it looks in an illusory sense, but uh, when you see the, the work, because it's spray paint, it's incredibly flat. There's no materiality or physicality to it at all. So it sort of slips away from you in a way. And I've used the black and white to create a sort of sense of, sense of shadow, this sort of shallow depth. Um, I mean, the painting's actually structured like a, like a classical painting. Uh, like an Arcadian landscape, but taken into the realm of slightly dystopic area, really. So that you, you uh, which how a classical landscape functions is that you move, you zigzag into it like that. So there's a sort of rational composition, but then irrational elements. Um, next one, um, and this one, delusions, is a similar size, um, and. This is really trying to kind of explode notions of composition in a sense of traditional composition. So to make something that feels delusional almost, whether the painter is delusional or, or the viewer, but hopefully has a sort of um, slightly hallucinogenic quality to it, um, where everything is, unlike the last one, where you can kind of move through it quite easily visually, with this one it's kind of sort of blocks it's like everything's competing to get out of the painting um and um so it's quite it's quite full on when you see it. um but also uh this idea of trying to paint fire as well which um is a kind of you know a sort of another kind of symbol of chaos in a sense and the the you know burning time burning tires if you can't see what it is um uh, trying to capture the most incendiary momentary thing I can sort of think of in paint. It's really difficult to, to paint fire because it's not static, it's just ever moving and just an, an aside, it's always important um, in my work to have like a sort of technical challenge every, with every painting so that with every every single work there's always something that I kind of think how on earth am I going to do that and I can't work it out and then I have to sort of work it out. Um, so that's another sort of recurring, recurring theme, recurring image. Um, this one, Night Moves, it's a bit hard to see, which is the point. Um, so what it is, this pile of, again, the pile of tyres that seems to kind of disappear into the darkness, and then this scaffolding, which is obviously a sort of impossible structure. Um, the scaffolding moved from being quite rational from the first image into now, it's just sort of, it's quite ridiculous, really. It kind of can't possibly sort of exist. Um, <clears throat> it looks like it's lit, so perhaps it's on fire or, or whatever. This is a little painting of that scale over there, and again, it's where all the kind of elements are trying to try fighting to get out. But the point of this really is to introduce the idea of the darkness, um, which definitely is going to be a thing that I'll be uh, sort of exploring more and more through the residency. Um, the idea of making a painting that you can't see. Um, I found that really interesting, you know, because painting is all about seeing and looking. And so, if the, if you make something that you can't, you know, you can't quite grasp what's going on, <coughs> it's sort of an interesting proposition. And I think I'm going to do that more. Um, the idea of having a very dark space where things are hinted at and you can't quite grasp what what they are. Um, next one. So the next. No, yeah, that looks okay. Um, the next sort of few slides are introducing the idea of the recurring image. And I, it, it's a fantastic sort of starting this residency because I've, I sort of started doing this. Um, and then I can kind of now relate it to this and, and actually sort of deepen the, the ideas within, within this repetition, say. So <clears throat> there's a painting that I'm obsessed with. I've got it here. Uh, which is um, from 1609, Adam Elsheimer's Flight into Egypt. It's, it's little. I thought it was massive and it's really tiny. Um, I'll, t I'll talk briefly about that in a minute. Um, but I've kind of started to, to use it again and again. Um, and it, it, it kind of is quite interesting. So as I said, it's functioning for me as a, as a recurring image and the idea of a, a recurring dream 
but I can't ever, and so I'm painting it again and again, but I can't paint it the same way twice. I can't do it. Uh, so every time it's, it's different, it shifts. So it, it's kind of like that place in the dream that you, you keep returning to, that recurring, that recurring place that's familiar, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't really look how it does in reality and you can't ever quite grasp it. Um, <clears throat> and so with this one, I mean, it's, just, it's an excerpt from, from the painting, it's little. 60 by 60. Um, briefly, it's done in acrylic glazed layers, so uh, which creates a very flat but very, um, uh, what's the word? An image full of kind of depth, but that's, that has no surface. Um, and then there's this kind of hybrid imposter object um, intruding in this historical space. And so this is one of the kind of hybrid objects that I'm working with, that it references modernism or public sculpture or um, you know a monument or something, but it's not either one of these things. And uh, I want it to sort of function as a as an imp imposter into this historical space, therefore destabilising it and making it unreal. It's not it's not real. I think I'm sure Matt and Tom talked about the dream as imposter, um, and the idea of sort of suddenly awakening from this apparently sort of one one type of space into another um and that's the that's the painting from 1609 just briefly talk about about that um so i love this painting so much because it, it, it it's so early and it just feels like it's out of time it just feels like such a later painting how there's sort of, there's a biblical narrative, but it's really like, he's not that bothered about that, I don't feel. He's, it's kind of quite sidelined. And it's all about that landscape and the moon and the almost black trees um, and the kind of unbounded, unboundless sky. I think it was about the same time that Galileo's uh, treatise was, 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 came out with all this sort of new um, uh, view of the moon and also the sort of, the idea that the Milky Way was separate stars as well. So it sort of like coincides with this time of discovery as well. Um, and it's just so gorgeous. But uh, but it's been very, in it's very interesting sort of recurring, painting it, painting it, and understanding about how the dark functions and how sporadic illumination makes somewhere even darker than if it, if it wasn't somehow. So anyway, here it, here it is again. Um, so with this one, um, this is another type of work. I've got one over there and I'll just show you physically in a sec. Um, which is again about simultaneity and seeing two things or more than more than two things at the same time. So thinking about how how that relates to, to dreams and the kind of overlaying of visual imagery that's so dense sometimes to be able to kind of unpick that is kind of impossible. Um, and so I want that with this one where the pictorial hierarchy background and foreground is just really it's not there so it's the, the two sort of things are fighting so <clears throat> how it's made briefly because it's, it's quite hard to see because it's flat it's um, is that the the painting or a version of the the historical painting sits underneath and then I just paint over with masking fluid with big brush strokes and then there's another layer that comes on top of that which is the really sort of silly cartoon landscape um, and the masking fluid is, is peeled off so it's hard to tell what comes first and what comes second is, is the idea and I really like the idea of absurdity as well and hopefully that relates to some of the research in, in a sense in terms of sort of visual absurdity um, uh, and the way that you know these kind of really cartoon clouds sit against the kind of classical clouds um, rendering the whole thing kind of un unreal. Um, so this one is a working product. <laughs> it's just a, to show you kind of what it looks like halfway through. Um, so again, this this. Uh, landscape and then you know you can sort of see that this is this this is going to be worked on the whole thing is going to be worked I'm not sure where it's going to go yet I might the landscape might migrate across out of it I don't know um, but the 
painting again sits behind here with um, but this time I've added in kind of warped grid to, and it, it's really shifted it it makes it feel like it's kind of sliding off the canvas somehow um, just adding in more layers of complexity in response to this sort of idea of visual layers simultaneative time um, and place as well um, and of course like it made me think about <clears throat> the actual original painting that I keep going back to, which is an illusion in itself because it's not a real place anyway. It's another illusion that I'm kind of returning to with these new illusions. Um, so, on the next sort of little series, if you like, these aren't um, chronological, by the way. There isn't a movement from one thing to the other. I'm going to be using all of these like, elements all in the same painting so um but this next sort of few slides are about sort of the idea of the apparition um which occurred to me is sort of a kind of came out of reading uh, Michel Foucault's ideas of heterotopia uh which I absolutely love it gets you away from the binaries of dystopia and utopia into this weird kind of in-between sort of space where <clears throat> spaces, events, things even are sort of reflections of society but with inverted rules or also something existing in two states at the same time which he, he says uh, for example is the mirror so it's a real thing and it's a reflection which isn't real at the same time and I think this is really fascinating and hopefully relevant to this research as well um, and so this idea of the kind of car the idea of the carnival, the bonfire night, the festival is is a kind of heterotopia. So it's where the kind of idea for this weird apparition um, came from. And then moving out, sort of zooming out of that, the apparition for me is definitely a sort of uh, symbol of the illusion of, of painting as well. And the sort of belief of the fiction of painting. Um, uh, so it's kind of slightly borrowed from, Go the face of this is slightly borrowed from Goya. <clears throat> I'll talk about Goya in, in, a, in a sec. Um, and you can't see it here, but the materiality of the weird figure, is it, is it a ghost? Is it a person dressed up? Is it alive, dead, eff an effigy, whatever? Um, that's in oil paint, so it sits on the um, acrylic, the rest of it, in, in a quite a it's very displaced because it has a very different physical texture. Um, next one, I'll just briefly say this. So this is this is different to the others in a sense because it's one space, it's kind of a total space, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to have this sort of feeling of suspension of like that sort of feeling of hovering and dusk and what that would atmospherically feel like to have an apparition there. Just briefly, it's, it's, it's um, influenced by an M.R. James ghost story, um, uh, which in which the protagonist thinks he knows everything about the rational world and is very certain and then digs something up and is confronted by the supernatural and then it destabilizes his rational worldview. I just think, don't dig it up, leave it up. Um, but what interests me about that is, is the sort of the meta-narrative really uh, of, of the kind of certainty being destabilized. Um, that's small as well. So, and then um, this, little one um which is another title from a 19th century um ghost story but using now which i haven't done before but the um uh the the um setting of a wood or forest which sort of is quite sort of fairy tale like or mythological and then the character the kind of um hybrid object which almost becomes like a character as appearing again even more discarded in that but I was reading some of the Brian O'Shaughnessy that you recommended, Tom, and he was saying about um, dreams being um, uh, like um, fairy, tales, fairy tales or myths in, that, in the range of possibilities that they can encompass. And, and also he was talking about um, dreams always having a setting and never being placeless, which I guess is, you know, how subjective that is. I don't know. It was quite interesting. So... Um, I'll probably explore that further near the end. Um, so just to show you um, another kind of bit of source material, which is Francisco de Goya, 
uh, from 1798. So, um, kind of looking at Goya, always happens, but um, um, <clears throat> specifically because uh, he's a fantastic painter, but how he kind of took um, socio-political issues and war and persecution and things like that into the realms of dreams and nightmares um, and sort of hallucinations. So this is like a recent thing that I've been looking at in terms of kind of government source material for appropriation. Um, so with this one, which is in the air, it's kind of, he's really sort of satirising the church at the time for sort of persecuting and, you know, whatever, witches and sorcerers whilst at the same time because of that acknowledging their existence. Um, and so I took, this is the last one, so this is a new work, um, then like completed like last week or something. Um, so I kind of appropriated and took his, his, his male witches into my kind of world um, without the without the figure in between them because I want them to be to be more ambiguous what they're doing I suppose um, and and also I want it to be you know by decontextualizing that little group of witches into now into the space of now contemporary world they become kind of untethered from their original source um, you know, and there's a sort of there's a sort of time difference of understanding. You know, people would have understood what they were wearing looking at that in the late eighteenth century, um, but we don't now. So they become this sort of ominous, but sort of slightly unknowable figures there um, into the world of the kind of burning tires and the wood at night and the fire again, and then so it's here, and then <clears throat> and then coming back up to the surface and destroying the illusion, destroying the fiction of the painting with the kind of revealing of the canvas and the spray paint, um, which sort of the tires, the kind of rendered tires turn into just graffiti in a sense, hopefully. Um, there's a bit of a nod as well to, to Max Ernst here with this splash, which is the way of starting the painting. I just chuck it on. So it's a sort of accidental mark, which uh, the surrealists used to kind of do um, as a sort of a way of, you know, potentially a way of accessing the subconscious, seeing an image in an accident. So I thought, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to use that. But also, for, for me, it became a way of like starting the painting, of igniting the painting, of starting, you know, commencing work, um, but also a way of sort of orientation, and then the kind of drips become trees, and then the wood gets integrated into there. Um, so that's that's the, the latest. So I think that. So in conclusion, really. Um, so broadly, I'm kind of thinking um, about painting itself being a kind of uh, metaphor for, um, well, actually, sort of functioning as real and unreal at the same time. So because the painting obviously is a real object in space that exists, maybe this relates to wakeful consciousness, um, but the, what's on the surface of the painting is obviously an, an illusion and is, is fictional and it's not real. So I feel like this is, an, sort of looking at some of this research, starting doing this residency has really made me think about this, so I'm pleased. Um, but, uh, and, um, and so how it, how it sort of almost is a, as a thing, a special thing maybe that can exist in two states at once. So thank you very much for listening and, and <laughs>